Just to remind you, the purpose of this event today is, is really just to check in with one another, to, to share our experiences about what we've been doing over the past COVID year, but also before COVID, um, to exchange some ideas about how we think we need to progress PB in Scotland. Now, we know, we know that a lot of activity, face-to-face -face activity, necessarily stopped while the pandemic uh, has been going on, but there has been some online work continuing and also there's been a lot of development and planning work happening both at local authority level and, and at a national level in Scotland in terms of where we go next with PB. The National Strategic Group was established last September and I was invited to be its independent chair. It recognises the good work that's already been done, but also the vital work that needs to happen. It's operating within the specifics of these extraordinary and incredibly sad times in which we are living. Times in which so much has changed, including the accelerated move to digital and much, much else. But it also wants to be about enabling and supporting long-term shift. Within the group, we're clear that we cannot manage PB, controlling what does or does not happen. The group, however, does want to try to set the tone and ambition and to lay out future steps. The ambition is that in five years time, participatory budgeting is understood as part of the core infrastructure of a constantly renewing and changing democratic and community life across Scotland. This means that we need to go both deeper into embedding PB into decision-making in those areas where it is already established as well as widening involvement of PB into other spheres of public life where it is not yet as present as it could or should be. It also means that we need to get clearer about what PB can and cannot do and of its place within a wider democratic renewal toolkit. It means that we face up to some of the risks of PB when it's not done well, and make sure that we're always learning from best practice, both within Scotland and internationally. The next few months are going to be deliberately busy for the group, as well as continuing to reflect on how we offer leadership and play our part in the essential culture shift required. We also want to focus on developing the capacity of PB in four spheres. These spheres are health and well-being, education, community well-being and safety and housing. And in the last of these, housing, we're really keen to see a focus on how PB can relate to the ever-increasing appetite for climate justice. In this, we are keen to be developing a clear plan, sorry, a clear plan, laying out how PB can become embedded in these spheres of policy and practice. And if today people are involved in these areas, that's health and well-being, education, community well-being and safety, and housing, we're really keen to learn from you and to work with you please give your contact details either to me directly, to David Riley, the group secretary, or to the conference organizers, and they will get that information to us. We're also crystal clear that in the development of this work, we need to have a particular commitment to those whose voices, experience, and wisdom is most often marginalized. A PB model which fails to place at the centre of our ambition those who are most regularly let down by our existing systems and structures will have failed. Our timeline is a demanding one. 
we want to have concluded the first phase of our work by the early summer and in an initial plan to lay out where we think energy needs to be focused over the lifetime of the next Scottish Parliament. If agreed, a fresh group would then take on responsibility to, for trying to ensure that we remain on track. It's a really good question, actually, because taking PB aside, I think the whole engagement agenda and framework kind of pales in insignificance. I mean, you've got people that can make their basic needs, and obviously what they're trying to think of is how they're getting through the next day. They don't really care how this budget's been spoke about. I suppose for me, it's about taking this as a long-term process because it's not just going to be in the, the interim, so hopefully we can start to address that food insecurity point of view and then get them thinking about engagement and PP processes in the future. But there's also a little bit about potentially the PP processes or PP proposals actually addressing the food insecurity. So there might be things that can come out locally that will address that as well. So for me it's hard to get the engagement when people are not that's not in the, the front forefront of their mind, but maybe something we need to think about. And if it is a PP process, maybe encourage proposals don't tackle that. Then also start to talk about people in a long a long term basis of this is engagement. This is why you should be included and this is why you should be included in PB. Okay, thanks, Francesca. Do you want to make a very quick comment each, Gillian and David, and then we'll, we'll go on to the next question? Sure, um, I can come in um, just very quickly and generally, I suppose, because I can't comment for every local authority, but PB, it, if certainly at the moment is part of that conversation about recovery from COVID and local authorities and their communities have worked together in in different ways and in many similar ways in the last year and there's been a lot of learning from that and um, I, I think what we've learned in the last year and how uh, local authorities and communities have worked together will be fundamental in that long-term change about how a uh, PB happens and that shift towards participation and decision making so I don't think there's an easy answer uh, to that question Don but I think it's fundamental to understand when we ask people in communities questions and are they ready to participate and putting those networks and systems and support in place to allow them to do that in a meaningful way so I think timing is everything you would have seen that there's not a lot of PB in the last year because is that the priority right now of course participation and decision making is important but I think it, it, it's complex but the fact that PB certainly from a political leadership part point of view is involved in the recovery from COVID is is phenomenal and gives us great opportunity to build. Okay, thanks, Gillian. David? Yes, I think it's interrelated, Dawn. Um, and I think, I think that in one line, the approach is that support should be delivered in a community development way, where we are meeting needs, but we're also looking at um, aspirations and assets for people to meet their own needs and to support those as we're meeting immediate needs. The example I would offer for that is the Tannehill Centre in Fergusley Park, area of deprivation in Scotland, often kind of number one in the SIMD index, which used PB prior to the pandemic to um, bring the community together so that then what they found was that when the pandemic struck, that it was the communities themselves who relied on relationships of trust that were developed through PB. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, relied on those kind of relationships to deliver those immediate services, um, including food, but where it was all about kind of identifying priorities and assets within the community. They've won awards, which were richly deserved. It's brought the community closer together. They've then gone on to start a participatory process um, for the next stage. And it means that they've worked really, really well with the local authority and they're better able to work with the local authority in terms of the needs and priorities of the community. So, uh, Gavin, yeah, you mentioned the console platform, and um, for those of you who don't know, I 
to take the lead on console development from a Cosless perspective. What's really important to, to us with co the console platform is that it's not just a platform for voting. It does have deliberative methods, but it's also not just about PB. It's about online um, discussion, deliberation, and that's not just between the local authority uh, and people or people and the local authority. That's between people that live in communities and in places because we don't need to always have those conversations in one a, a one directional space. It's about people talking about what matters to them in the community and it being, let's be honest, a safe space for local authority staff to be able to have that conversation where they can't have that in a safe way on um, on social media. So um, CONSOL is, I mean, the tool that, that uh, COSLA are supporting with local authorities. Not all local authorities will use it and that's absolutely fine. Um, but the ones that are, we are looking at it beyond that place to click a vote that's important because you know that's one of the fundamental parts of pb is that decision making but the deliberation is fundamental in inclusion of uh, diverse people and voices and that that part of online deliberation happens at a place and a time that is accessible for people so you know, an event that takes place on a Saturday afternoon is not accessible to absolutely everybody, but an online space that is always open allows people that opportunity to participate in any way that, that matters to them, really, rather than it being a uh, one size fits all. OK, thank, thanks, Gillian. I'm going to bring in Francesca first before David, actually, just because, I mean, you'll have a community perspective in terms of the use of online and, and access to console and so on. So do you want to come in, Francesca, and then a quick comment from David, and then we've got another couple of questions. Yeah, I think there's a couple of things to that. I mean, I've not seen console yet, um, so I couldn't, I can't comment on the platform. I think it's great. Um, it looks as if it would be a good tool. For us in the voluntary sector, though, it's not accessible at the minute, and I think that's, that's one of the, the major things I've been was talking about over the last couple of years that whatever tools are going to be used that they're used across the board and that every partner can get access to them I think that's important for communities it's, it's really interesting because we've done loads of online work in the last year um, to quite a lot of success but what we found is the basic everyday packages work best for us in communities and I think we need to remember that as well so we've seen some deliberative sessions online um, talking about Potent, um, potential PB proposals that's come up, um, funding that we've been going out, and, and they've all been facilitated in Zoom. It sounds really strange, but it, it just seems to have worked. Also, I think for us, because we're slightly independent and because we're an anchor, it, people, it's a safe space for people, so it's not being ran by one particular public authority or public sector organisation. People are safe because they know us, they know our workers. So there's a bit about that relationship embedment as well when it comes to the online stuff. And people will turn up and have that honest discussion if it's at a time that suits them and also on a platform that they find accessible um, with people that are independent they feel safe to speak to. So um, the online deliberation thing is interesting. Um, but that's, I suppose, our perspective. If we're going to be doing stuff that's online, one platform it needs to be suitable for everybody that's going to be using that platform to take away any of these issues um, and that it's a safe space facilitated independently, I suppose. Okay, Thank, thanks, Francesca. David, could you just give us a very quick comment on that and then I'm going to take the last two questions together. Really quickly then, I think with all forms of community engagement, you often go to where the community are and I guess that kind of principle would apply with online as well. I think any kind of prog um, program like console, I think is excellent. It'll be a work in progress. And I think we are investing and in hoping to widen that out um, to communities and citizens as, as much as possible in a way that meets the needs of local authorities or public bodies. Thank you, 